Today we have Andre J. Ajawi. Ajawi. He is the CEO of Ajawi Architecture and Construction Group. And he is a season five winner of, J, of JN, the Innovator, a small business competition in 2014. He has over 10 years of industry experience. Ajawi Construction is an architectural and construction management company that helps Jamaicans living overseas to purchase property, design their home, design their dream home, and do construction while living overseas. He also has a YouTube channel called Ajawi underscore TV, which I encourage everybody to subscribe to. And I will make sure that I have that. Um, matter of fact, let me put that up right now. That is his YouTube channel right there. So if you want to go ahead and check it out. And I think, again, as I mentioned before, I think he's doing a really great service for Jamaica in terms of how he's doing it and what he's doing and the target market that he's going after. And uh, at this time, I would like to welcome... Hey, afternoon, afternoon. Nice to have you. Nice to have you. Uh, really want to say it's a, it's a pleasure and I appreciate you taking time out on your Sunday to join our live discussion here. Yeah, it's a pleasure. It's always, you know, my pleasure to help out as much as I can. Yeah, that's always the aim. Isn't it? Excellent, excellent. Excellent. And as I mentioned, uh, you know, in, in the introduction and also in our in our discussion yesterday that there, and I'm sure you can see in the comments too that so many people are interested in this topic of your expertise and what you're doing and not even what like what you're doing for sure, but I would say how you're doing it. And I know I, I, I had introduced you, um, but I'm sure there were gaps in that introduction. So I, I, I want to throw, throw the ball over back into your court and uh, have you introduce yourself as well. Should I do it like how I do it on the channel? Let's do it. <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Ajawi. Welcome to, what do you say, Ajawi. Oh, we're breaking up there a little bit, Andre. Hold on. We lost Andre. It's frozen. Just give it a second. I'm sure he'll be back up in a second. Uh, one sec, one sec. Sorry. Okay, there we go. Oh yeah, it froze up for a little bit. Uh, yeah, you gotta start. You gotta start all over again. <laughs> You're putting me on the spot, man. <laughs> yeah. Um. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Ajawi, and I help returning residents do construction in Jamaica while they're living overseas. Yeah. So that's what I do. Um. Myself and my wife. Um. We we have set out to help at least uh, uh what ten thousand. Jamaicans to return to Jamaica, build their dream home, and do it all while overseas and do it safely. All right, that's the most important part. No, amazing, amazing. And uh, you're the first person, I said this before, you're the first contractor construction company that I've heard targeting this specific demographic. And um, it was so interesting and also very, I would, in a sense, obvious, but nobody was doing it in terms of... And, and I, I, live, I live so close to the road, so sorry about that. <laughs> no problem, no problem, no problem, no problem at all. Um, but you, you know, you really using technology to build confidence and build trust in the clientele that you have. I also think that the design and and how you in in the homes that you are building is super modern. I think it's super unique, and I think it's uh, I think it's really awesome. Uh, so with that. Let's. Why? Why did you focus on going Returning after? Residents. Yeah, and going after those folks. Well, I was watching a a very popular news channel, and I I got uh, I got kind of upset when I heard it. Um, the then president, I don't know if he still is, but the president of the Returning Residents Association actually was advising Jamaicans to stay overseas. And what? to stay away from home. So I was like, yo, how can somebody who is supposed to be here to help residents return to their homeland be telling them to stay overseas? And that kind of, it kind of rubbed me the wrong way. 
because I'm like, hey, I would I would someday probably, if not for a long period of time, I may travel overseas for a weekend and decide to return back home. So what what are you going to say to me? Because I'm a returning resident in that case. So, you know, that kind of led me to start focusing on providing that support that they need to do construction while they're living overseas and, and to actually help them to put a price to it, as in kind of give them that knee jerk that they need. Because most of the times, you know, there is a disconnect between price and construction cost and size of building. So uh, that's what the channel is about. It's about helping you to actually make it a reality, right? And not just having that pie in the sky type of situation. And how do you how do you find your clientele? Uh, my clientele you... find me. <laughs> they find me. I want to tell you, most of my clients are from the channel and they're from referrals. So once I start working with people, they normally leave comments on, on um, Google. And through that, they kind of find me from there. Okay. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And what would I say? The, the style of construction that you have and also architecture. Are you an architect by, by trade? I am, I am in the process of becoming an architect. I'm, gotcha. I'm actually an architectural technologist. So I design. I am... Um, in my final semester at the University of Technology at uh, the Caribbean School of Architecture. So I'm like, almost there, like two weeks left. Oh, wow. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. So I actually did a diploma before in drafting and building technology. And from there, I've been, you know, in the industry working and gaining experience and meeting people and um, just trying to be the best at what I do. Mm -hmm. And is this something that you always want to get into, um, construction? Um, it's design that I'm more interested in, right? So I, so, so each time I take on a project, it's most, it's more of, okay, I want to design this home that makes people feel just this feel that I want to invoke for them to, you know, enjoy their home and then, I moved off to say, okay, if I'm designing, I want it to be built exactly how the client wanted it to build or exactly how they wanted it to be designed. And I think one of the reasons why I decided that, hey, I want to, I want to administer it is because sometimes I design stuff and the contractor may change it during the construction. And sometimes the people don't get to finish it. And there was a disconnect between the the cost and the actual design. So I decided that, hey, I'm, I want to know how much it will cost to build this. And even before we start doing construction, I need to know what what is your budget looking like before you start. And if it is that there's a disconnect between your budget and what is actual, I want to help you to kind of steer you in the right direction to make that meet at some point. And then from there, you need to have that budget going straight throughout the project. So I don't take on any project that I don't design, one. And two, if you don't know your budget and you don't want to know your budget, then we can't work together. So that kind of force, force people to start thinking, OK, this project that I'm taking on, what time do I want it to be built in? How much am I looking to spend on it? And what is the design looking like? And then couple all of that. And from your website, it shows that you are like an all-encompassing company. Can, yeah. you, can you explain what that means and what that looks like from soup to nuts? All right. So most of the times when, when returning residents are looking to do construction, they don't really know who to go to or where to where to get the engineer, where to get the land surveyor, where to get the quantist. Sometimes they don't even know that they need to have these guys in play, right? So you need your land surveyor, you need a, your quantity surveyor, you need your engineer, and you need your architectural designer. Most of the times they don't know that. And then you need a contractor, right? And you also need a contract administrator. So because they didn't know all of this, I decided that, hey, I want to couple all of that. I will deal with all of that on ground. Right. So 
I will get your, the drawings approved for them, right? And then move into actually making sure that we have the, the quantity survey or quantify all of those material and labor because most of the times they don't know that, right? Then we move to actually creating a contract. I think the most important part of doing all of that is actually getting the contract in place. And most of the times I didn't do that. So I wanted just a system in place that once they activate that system and follow it step by step, it works itself out. And you as the resident can feel that much more comfortable um, working the system, right? So it's, and also it's never, it's never a situation where you're not informed or you are spending, what I say, sending all your money back or big lump sums of money because I think that's that's where uh, returning residents get a beaten sometimes. They are in a position where they have to send back, say, 50% of construction money and they just send it back blindly and they're not seeing what's going on. So it, it kind of helped me to, you know, innovate a little. And that's where I actually started to inter inject technology into it. And can you explain some of your methodologies in integrating technology into your business model? <laughs> all right. So all right. one of the things that I started out doing was like using drones to video the site. So say somebody wanted to buy a piece of property. Most of the times they don't buy being informed because... 90% of the times when they get a picture from a realtor, <laughs> it's kind of showing nothing. There's no information for them to get. <laughs> so um, I looked at it and I was like, if I'm buying property overseas and I'm overseas, how, how does this help me? So I, I decided that, hey, I'm going to start there. So started to use the drone and actually do a site investigation before you start, before you decide to buy. So a couple of people reached out and went and we showed them slope and actually an analysis. So we look at wind direction, slope of land, what type of soil is there? What is the road condition what, you know, in the area? What, what type of crime has been committed over the years? So um, that kind of took off. Uh, we got a few people liking that service and then we moved into using the drone during construction, right? So I decided that, okay, during construction for each phase, I want to do a, a walkthrough of the construction that's going on. I want to also do a flyover, right? Each phase, each time I go to visit a site, I want you to be able to see exactly what has changed, right? So what I did was to just um, create like a folder for them. And each time I do a visit, it would be in a folder and it would be linked to their computer and also my computer. So every time I just drop information in that, and they're able to go back to those folders to see what the changes are. And um, it, it, it is well received, <laughs> basically, because people like, people like to see drone footages, right? So that kind of pushed me to say, all right, what else could I possibly do to, to help more or to, to enable you to make a good decision? So... I started off just using the phone and just walking through the building and, and showing that construction. And I actually, it actually helped me to be able to help them even more because I would go back through these footages and see where something may have been amiss in a, in a particular area that is being constructed and could, was able to pull this out and, you know, write notes to, to the contractor to say, hey, at this position, you this door is in the wrong position or the door doesn't seem like the right size and those notes would be sent to the contractor and the contractor would be able to make decisions at that point to make those changes. So I found that um, very helpful to, the, to, the, to those that are overseas and they felt comfortable, right? To take it a step further, I decided that, okay, wouldn't it be great if while I'm walking through the building, the resident could actually click on the screen and turn wherever they want to see. So I decided to get um, to do a 3D scan of buildings that are being constructed. Right. So now I, I offer the service where you have 360 view 
of the building while I walk through it. So you can actually click around and, and actually move the camera and see exactly what is going on and pull out little areas. So, so I, I did that and I mean, it's fairly new. So not a lot of people have catch on to that because they don't know what it is, but I think that's the way to go. That's the way of the future. So I'm always trying to innovate um, really. And also what I do is like BIM. So most of the times when we're doing construction, um, a lot of people just use the 2D drawings, but I wanted to control construction costs by the design, with the design itself. So I looked at it as, okay, can I do calculation, volume calculation from my drawings or how do I show the client the information that is in the drawing in a way that they understand it and how do I then use that same drawing on the construction site to be able to make changes, to update. And even if the client wants a change, how do I show them the change before they make it on site? So that's how I started to inject um, building information modeling into it. So right now, when a client comes to me and they're doing a design, the first thing that we're discussing is budget and, and um, using these 3D models to show them the relationship between the budget and all of that. So that's how it, it, it came into play. No, I think that's amazing. You're just bringing like this level of transparency and people, your clients will know they send down X dollars exactly what it's going towards. And then yeah. physically in a sense, <laughs> it's their money it. working for them, you yeah. know, as opposed to back in the day. And I brought the example earlier of my father building this hotel where you send money and you just hope and pray, right? That, that yeah. you can trust this person, uh, whoever it is. And unfortunately, sometimes, and I'm sure you've heard these stories before as well, Like, but sometimes in these situations, it's your own family members that are really taking advantage of you. You thought it was a cousin, uh, yeah. a brother, whoever, whatever the, the, the relationship is, you thought they could trust you, you could trust them, but instead they're using you. And we heard this time and time again. And so uh, this certainly is a breath of fresh air that you're take, you're going to this extent to ensure just peace of mind for, for your clientele. Um, I want to tell you though, this mm -hmm. is that, that scenario that you spoke about um, of family members being the person to really take advantage of you, that was my first video. Cause I was I was kind of upset <laughs> about it, and I was like, "Yo, I did a video on on YouTube. I think it got like fourteen thousand or a hundred thousand views or something like that." But I was like, "Why are you sending back money to somebody who doesn't know about construction? Somebody who is in a situation that they're in a depressed situation, and you're sending them back money, live money, to do construction for you?" So you know. Yeah, you, you got to be careful. You got to be careful. No, for sure. For sure. Um, and before we move on, any, anybody in the chat, if you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I will try my best to get to them and to ask Andre. And of course, if you're getting any value out of the discussion that we're having, please hit that like button. It helps out tremendously, tremendously. And lastly, make sure you go to Andre's YouTube channel. It has a lot of great information. It's scrolling across there at the bottom. Uh, for you to, to to look into if this is something that you're you're considering and doing um, a lot of great videos there and a lot of the things that he is talking about he not only lived but he also documented on his channel so I encourage you to do that as well. Um, what would you say are the advantages to building a home in Jamaica, doing construction in Jamaica? Well, I mean. Right now, when when you have a country that is this beautiful and you are seeing infrastructure going in, you're seeing investments coming in, you're seeing the projection ahead, it can only get better, right? So investing in, 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 in Jamaica in, in the form of, construction or constructing your own home it kind of is very important 
if you want to multiply your money, basically. So the investment opportunity is there. Um, if you notice, um, a lot of the properties that are being bought up, a lot of the properties that are being developed are being developed by foreigners. Why are you as a Jamaican not taking the opportunity to own a piece and invest in that piece, right? And not only own that one piece, but own investment properties, right? Yeah, that's, that, that's really the advantage. Um, additionally, you can look at it from um, the climate is just great, right? Um, a lot of people come out here during the winter. We, we have summer all year round. So it, it, it's, it, it goes to see, right? It, it answers itself. Great, great, great. And kind of sticking along the same lines, you have been in this industry for for 10 years. What would you say are some of the difference that you're seeing in the industry uh, now in 2023 compared to when you first came in and around the 2013 mark? I mean, the technology is changing. Um, how we do construction is, is kind of evolving a little. Um, the speed at which we're doing construction now is changing. And, and I think that's because of the injection of um, foreign investors or foreign, um, let us say, methodology, right? And uh, you, you're, I don't want to say um, you're getting cheaper labor um, because of some of the players that are coming on board, but um, that is one of the factors. Right, you're getting cheap labor in some cases. But for those that are living overseas, once you come back home, you know, your money just tripled or you know, quadrupled. So at the end of the day, you're in a better position and you can get more more in the long run. But um <clears throat> what I've noticed additionally is that some of the areas that weren't able to be accessed easily, they are now being able to access right very easy because because of the, the infrastructure that is going on right? what, do you mean, uh, what do you mean by areas do you mean like topographically yeah okay yeah. so so like um gone were the days when when i wanted to go to saint elizabeth it would take a long time no it's what hour two hour max when i wanted to go to ocho rios it was a, I would have to drive um, bug walk and go all over that hill. But now you have the, the, the highway. And also like um, St. Thomas, Portland, you're having a new highway in that, that side as well. So the infrastructure that is going in right now is what is going to really drive um, development. So uh, I spoke about it, when, I think it was a year ago. Um, somebody was asking me, hey, what do you think about um, property in in um, St. Thomas, I'm telling him, hey, you need to buy now, <laughs> right? You need to buy now. Before before the highway finish, you need to buy. Because once you see road going in, once you see they start putting in transportation hub, hospital, that area is being, the, the demand in those areas are being met, met right? And as soon as you see those things going in, you need to start putting your interest there. And through your clientele, are you seeing any or increased demand in any specific area of the country? Um, I think a lot of, a lot of, a lot of, I can't say there's an increased demand in any one particular area. I just know that a lot of, a lot of times, most people don't necessarily know where to go to find these properties, right? Um, they don't know about LMS. Uh, they don't know about um, <clears throat> getting in touch with a, with a realtor and just saying, hey, add me to your LMS. So whenever you have properties, no matter where it is, I get a notification. What's LMS? Because right? I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a website. It's a website that realtors use. So <clears throat> um, from time to time, I get, I get a notification on my, in my email. Say, hey, 
we have these properties available. Um, do you like them or would you want to buy? And they actually tell me the area. So you can actually go on that website and you actually see every single property that is for sale within that area. What website? What is the website? I, I don't know. I don't remember the website. I just know that my realtor just sent it to me because I'm not necessarily the, the, the real estate agent. So she Enough just sent it to me and I just click and search sometimes. And sometimes I pull it out and, you know, announce it on my channel as well. So it's something that I just look out for sometimes. Or if I'm driving past a property, I'll just say, hey, let me just take a picture and send it and see what happens. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, so getting away from the the market, so to speak, and and going back into the nitty gritty of construction itself, mm -hmm. how do you, how do you find or did you find your team to, as you explained earlier, get a property from groundbreaking to house opening? You mean um, selecting the team or, or okay, selecting the team. Right. All right. So for me, um, my QS and I, um, we kind of have the same mindset a little, <laughs> right? Um, so what I normally do once I prepare the set of drawings, I actually issue a tender, right? Um, a tender is where you invite people people to come and bid on your project. And from doing that, we actually have a few people that we know, hey, these people do good work. We've done work with them before. And we just invite them to the tender. And uh, the important part of that is actually having that tender document prepared and ready. And then issuing that, that document to them to say, hey, these are the scope of the project. I want you to bid on it. And when I, when you, if you're successful, you'll be offered a contract and you as the contractor, you have to come in with all of your team members, right? And execute the project for what you bid it for, right? So you bid, say $10, um, you are bidding for material and labor and not just material, right? And then I'm going to issue with a contract that you sign with, with our client. I, and then we as the project team, as in um, the designer or the contract administrator and the QS, we follow that project along, right? So with the with the BQ, of course, and a project tracker. So one of the things that I do is make sure that I have a project tracker so that once the clients spend money, I know the date, I know the amount, and I know what was projected, and I just plug it into that, that um, sheet. And that keeps me abreast of everything. It keeps the client abreast of everything. And it keeps the contractor and his team abreast of everything, right? So I think, I think most of the times how a lot of people mess it up is that they try to find, they try to find a contractor to give them the cost to do the construction and carry their labor, right? You don't want to do that. <laughs> it, it sounds, it sounds, uh, what did I say? Uh, it sounds tempting, but it, it's a bad move because the contractor is not the one supposed to tell you that. You're supposed to go to your quantity survey and the quantity mm -hmm. survey invite the contractor and invite a few contractors. You don't want a monopoly effect on your project. You right. Want to, you don't want to start off with, with, a situation where the contractor knows that, hey, I'm going up against three persons and those three persons are going to be bidding the same as I am. They probably have a quantity survey of their own and they're coming in knowing that, okay, this project, I, I want to win this project and I want to be able to complete this project. And then you back that up with the contract in place. Hmm. Yeah, you, you raised a lot of great points and even... As you're saying it, I'm realizing that there were some fundamental mistakes that were made even with my dad's strategy and perhaps other people's strategy and not having that separation of church and state and mm -hmm. having this one person that you're relying on solely to complete this very, very important project mm -hmm. can be a recipe for disaster with the wrong person. Yeah. <laughs> it's like you're just giving them too much control and too much power. And exactly. as absolute power absolutely corrupts. 
Uh, so, so great, great, great point there. And um, that makes perfect sense. And so with the model that you just described, are you the one essentially managing this whole project and managing the bidded construction team? All right. So we what all right, what I do is I try to, to compartmentalize it so there isn't a conflict of interest. Right. So what I will do is I'll make sure that so for the first phase, because I normally I normally split my projects into phases, right? You have the design and construction drawing phase to get approval, right? I will manage that aspect of it um, to the fullest. So I normally do the design, submit to the parish council and get the, those approved drawings to the client, right? And even within that phase, you have other sub phases within the design and approval drawing phase. So I would, I would want to take a step even further back than that, um, <laughs> which is the, the, purchasing process of the land okay. um you, you you brought up the mls so obviously you have to find where you want to build and go through that whole process and uh assuming you work through a realtor and a real estate lawyer and then the real estate lawyer of the person or entity that you're purchasing the land from right so those are the the pre-construction team that you need to have in place um and then, so where in that process are you stepping in? All right. So <clears throat> I step in when you have narrowed down. Oh, sorry. The, this, Come on, this, no problem. <laughs> so I step in when um, the client has found a few properties that they're looking at. Okay. And they want um, unbiased information. Right. So I normally would go to the property to do a a drone and site investigation survey, right? So somebody is looking to buy, they come to me and say, hey, I have this property, I'm not in, the Jam I'm not in Jamaica right now, and I want to know exactly what I'm getting into. I normally go to the site, I video on the way to the site, a video on the site, and then I do a drone survey of the site and show, uh, will you need to look at retaining walls for the property or installing retaining walls. Is the property sloping too much or what type of money are you looking at to, to actually build? Do you need to do infrastructure work before you start to build, All right? Um, <clears throat> and uh, if it is that it is a house, walk through, are there any leaks? What is the, the condition of the building looking like, All right? So I, I try to do a comprehensive um inspection of the property and then provide a spreadsheet for the client or a document for the client to say these are the our findings these are we, we don't say don't buy and we don't say buy what we do That's is true. present you with all the facts right unbiased because at, at that point whether you buy or set or, or walk away is not my my business that I want to make sure that you have all the information that the person who is selling selling it to you is not telling you, or you're not even thinking about it. So one of the one of the one of the um the one of the aspects of the report is looking at okay, what are the views, positive and negative views on the property, or opportunities that are there, right? What how is the sun affecting the site? How is wind affecting the site? Um. Is somebody beside you have a zinc house, right? Uh, right. I actually did a, a property where everybody around there is zinc and then they have this nice ocean view. But <laughs> so so those are the things that we look at during the preliminary phase, right? Mm -hmm. um, actually, I had a client where he's overseas. We actually went and did the preliminary site investigation for him, right? We showed him the entire community. We, we looked at how do we access the site. And because the property was not cut up yet, we were saying, hey, we don't see any possible water source. So if you're going to buy this property, you're going to have to think about water. You're going to have to think about sewage disposal. You're going to have to think about access and egress. Um, so we, you know, get into that. And then we say to you, hey, these are the pros and cons. You can make the decision. He actually bought, he bought the property, right? Uh, and then he came back to us now and, and asked us to do the design, 
So we are now in the phase that we are doing the design for him. And he actually has his lawyer because we always tell him, hey, get a lawyer when you're buying property. I don't know why some people do it. <laughs> get a lawyer, right? Um, and we are at the point where we submitted. Well, we prepared the design and it's ready for submittal. And before we even do the submittal, we do a pre-check with the parish council before we actually get to, the, to submit the drawings and get that approval. Throp here. You just finished watching a clip from On Deck with Throp. To watch the whole episode, you can click in the description below. Or if you want to watch another video, you can click somewhere up here. See you in the next one. Peace.